at the height of the U.S. involvement in Iraq, uh, when it was all about counterinsurgency, uh, there were a lot of people at the time who said, this is the sort of thing that comes back home. Uh, you can't have a 19-year war in Afghanistan and however long the U.S. was in Iraq uh, and not have the, the, that come home. It always comes home. Uh, in this case, around the country in the U.S., it's come home in, in, in the form of uh, former military that have in higher proportions uh, been hired as local law enforcement, and in this case as federal agents. It's come home in the form of military equipment. Uh, that's been uh, given by the federal government to local police uh, uh, agent, uh, police forces so that you see local police forces riding around the streets of American cities in the kinds of vehicles that the U.S. was using in the middle of Baghdad in 2006, which is horrifying. Uh, and now it's come it's come home in the, in this sense of the 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 president of the United States having his own private militia. Uh, with which he can antagonize local authorities and terrorize American citizens. So I, I think that any way you look at it, it's a horrifying development. It's one that uh, I'm, I'm happy to see the local authorities and the local mayors and, and governors pushing back against. Um, and and again, the, the, the reasoning is very clear. Trump wants to distract from his catastrophic handling of the pandemic. And yeah. the best way that he thinks that he can do that is by having televised confrontations between uh, uniformed uh, agents and the the protesters that he's characterizing as antifa, as radical left, et cetera. Uh, but uh, but really, it's it's pretty transparent what's got, what's happening. All right, it's not just as you put it, but his private militias, uh, a lot of those bo border patrols, uh, it, it, it seems, who are. Uh, on the whole, characterized as uh, more in attuned with uh, the views of Donald Trump. Uh, the Daily Beast this week, Barbie Latza Nadeau, uh, running a story about how, well, uh, chiefs of police are against it, mayors are against it, but the policemen's unions are for it. In fact, there was an open letter by the head of the policemen's union in Chicago uh, asking Donald Trump to send in uh, his federal agents. That's right, you know, because a lot of these police unions are terrified that some of these protests are going to result in defunding or refunding the police. And they, they, you know, a lot of these police unions are supporters of Donald Trump. They're part of the part of his base. And, and you know, he's really pandering to those people. And he's pandering to fear. And he's, you know, you look at the, some of the protests across the United States, all across the United States. And you can't help but see usual faces again on either side of it. And Trump knows exactly how to play that to his advantage. And he's got to play it to his advantage because otherwise we'd be talking about the coronavirus pandemic. Otherwise we'd be talking about the economy or politics in general. But as long as he can say the show of force is something that he's going to be able to deliver to the people, you know, that's about all he has left to run on in the can upcoming election. Can until November? We'll see. I mean, I don't think the protests are going to stop anytime soon. And I think part of that is because, you know, the, the police are, I mean, in some way, they're all playing the same game. They are it's very choreographed and they all know what their role is in this. Um, and those who want to see Donald Trump win in November uh, will want to see the protests continue until November.